today I'm going to show you how to do one of the A-level biology required parts. You need this for the AS and the A-level biology. And it's the production of a dilution series of sucrose to produce a calibration curve to identify the water potential of plant tissue. The plant tissue we're going to use to do this is going to be potato. The first thing we need to do is actually make our dilution series. Now for this, we need distilled water and we need a one mole per decimeter cubed sucrose solution, which the technician has prepared. Um, you can use measuring cylinder for this, or you can use 10 centimeter cubed syringes. Now we're going to make up 20 centimeters cubed of each of a number of different solutions. So this is how we're going to do it. First of all, you'll need to label your test tubes. You see, I've already made my dilutions here. So these are the different concentrations of sucrose solution that we're going to prepare. And to make 20 centimetres cubed up, obviously the zero uh, moles per decimetre cubed concentration of sucrose, it's just going to be water. So we need 20 centimetres cubed of water, no sucrose solution. Our 0.2 mole per decimetre cubed solution, we will need four centimetres cubed of the 0.1 molar, sorry, the one molar sucrose solution, and we'll need 16 centimetres cubed of water, and so on. So this table shows you how to prepare the rest of your dilution series. So as soon as you've done that, and you see I've got that here, your different sucrose solutions now need to go into a water bath to equilibrate at 25 degrees C, 25 or 30 actually both work fine for this experiment. And that means to allow them to come to a set temperature so that temperature is not a variable that might affect the results in this investigation. So I'll just pop those in a water bath now. Right, now while they are equilibrating, we're going to prepare some small chips of potato. Now the best way to do this is to use a number six cork borer, there we go. And we can actually cut, you can see I've done it here, little cylinders of potato tissue. You can actually use a chipper if you like. A chipper's better actually if you're making a large number for a, a large class or something like that. Okay, so make yourself some little cylinders of plant tissue and then you need to cut them all to a very similar size. Now I've already prepared these earlier and I've wrapped them in foil so they don't dry out. Um, and there they are, that's what they should look like. Now, the next thing we're going to do, once we've prepared our little chips, all very similar in size, we need to make sure they are thoroughly blotted dry. And just make sure you've got no potato skin left on the ends of them. Okay, so let's blot those to get rid of any excess water, any extra moisture. Okay, and then the next thing we've got to do, we've actually got to weigh each one of these potato chips. Now, the best way to do this is to either label up some filter papers with the different concentrations of the solution that you've prepared. And uh, or I'm using some little weighing boats here that I've labelled. And basically just put one chip in each weighing boat. Okay. And then using your top hand balance, you're going to simply weigh them. Okay, I better turn that on. And include the weight of the weighing boat. So you don't need to subtract the weight of the weighing boat. Okay, so weigh each one. Okay, and then, once you've done that, you need to record the mass of each potato chip, okay, in your results table. All right, and this is the kind of results that you might get. Notice that all the chips have a different mass at the start of the experiment. As soon as you've weighed every single potato chip, you then need to actually go over to your water bath and place each chip in the correctly labelled solution. Okay, and then you need to leave them in the water bath, set your timer, and 20 minutes should be plenty of time for this experiment to work. Now then, after 20 minutes, return to your water bath, and you'll see I've already done this, and you'll see that, well, you know, they all look very similar, but we now need to actually, you know, make our results very quantitative. So what we're going to do, we're actually going to remove the chips, and just like before, we're going to blot them dry. So I'm going to remove that from the solution, make sure you thoroughly blot it dry and do that for all of the chips. So we want to remove any excess water from the surface, okay? And then place them back in the same weighing boat that you labelled at the beginning and then you're going to re-weigh them. And again, I have done this. 
So let's have a look at the results here. Now, if we look at these, so these are the weights at the beginning, the mass at the beginning. This is the mass of each chip after 20 minutes in the different solutions. And we can actually see that some of the chips have gained mass, others have actually lost mass. Okay, now we ne now need to calculate the change in mass of each chip, which is obviously the difference between the two values. Make sure when you record these results, that you actually record a minus for any where they have lost mass. Now, if you want to compare the, uh, the amount of mass gained or lost by the different chips, we're going to have to do a little bit more calculating, and we're going to have to actually calculate the ch percentage change in mass. Now, to calculate percentage change in mass, all we do, we actually use the change in mass, so the actual change that you've recorded, Divide that by the original mass of the chip and then multiply your answer by 100 to turn it into a percentage. So I've done this here with the results. So you can see for the first chip here, the change in mass was 0 0.68 grams. So that's there on top of the calculation. The original mass was 3.76 grams. So I'm going to divide my 0 0.68 by 3.76. I'm then going to multiply it by 100 and you'll see that the change in mass of the first chip there was 18.09 grams. You're going to do this for all of the chips and make sure that you're aware that some of them are minuses, some of them have lost a certain percentage of weight. Once we've got this final column, we can now plot our results as a calibration curve. And this is the kind of curve that you should get. Okay, so let's have a look what we've got here. We've got the concentration of sucrose solution across the x-axis there. We've got percentage change in mass up the y there. And notice it's quite an unusual graph here because zero is there, okay? Because some chips have actually lost while others have gained. Now this is what's called a calibration curve. When we calibrate something, we give it value. So from this curve, we can actually work out the water potential of the potato tissue, the cellulose of those potato cells. And what we're looking for is the point at which our line crosses the x-axis. And there it is. That is the point at which the potato tissue did not lose or gain mass. So the potato chips in the solution with that concentration of sucrose was in an isotonic solution, which means a solution with the same water potential as the chips. So you can read the concentration of the solution, of the cytoplasm off there, and it is then possible to get a table uh, where you can actually work out from concentrations of sucrose what the water potential would actually be.